neutralizing the stain. After the concrete has properly dried and you've given it the reaction time that you feel it needs, whether it be a few hours or up to 24 hours, then it's time to unveil the artwork that you've created and see what color the concrete has really became. You do this by neutralizing the stain and rinsing off the residue. A residue will usually form during the drying stage. Some acid colors will have a heavier residue while other acid colors will hardly have any residue at all. Regardless though, the acid stain residue must be neutralized and rinsed off with clean water. You can use mops if inside, you can use water hoses if outside, you can use wet dry vacs, and you can use extremely soft bristle brooms whenever you're neutralizing and removing the residue. If you decide to use a soft bristle brush or a broom to kind of help break up the residue, then uh, two things to bear in mind. Make sure it's real soft. I mean, soft enough that you wouldn't mind using it to wash your car. And secondly, don't over scrub it. Don't be that guy. Because whenever you're neutralizing, then the acid stain is still in its infant stage. If you wanted to at this point, you could likely scrub it right on back down to concrete if you worked on it hard enough. So take it easy. All you're trying to do is neutralize the stain and you're just rinsing off the residue. You do not have to get 100% of the residue up, but you do need to get up as much as you can. Really, the main thing that you're trying to do is just neutralize the acid. The sealer will not be able to bond properly if the acid is still active. And you want to get up enough of the residue that if you're not going to seal it, then you're not going to track it anywhere. You can use either baking soda or TSP when you're neutralizing. However, we recommend ammonia. Take a half cup of ammonia, a gallon of water, mix them together in your sprayer, spray it on, and then mop it up. And you're going to pump that up. You're going to spray it right on the concrete and then you're going to rinse it two or three times with clean water only and that should be enough if you're doing it inside you'll either mop it up or you'll use a wet dry vac to pick it up you need to replace and replenish your water regular you don't want to let it get too dirty and it will get dirty quickly as you're picking up the residue so remember to empty your water regular to try to keep it as clean as possible if you're doing it outside and it's an exterior project then you're going to get your water hose and using your water hose you're just going to flood rinse it don't use spray nozzles or power washers whenever you're washing off the residue whenever you're neutralizing and washing it you'll just use your water hose running full blast and you'll just flood rinse it if you do decide to use the sprayer and the ammonia and spray that on that should neutralize a stain, but you're still going to need to flood rinse it at least a couple times. So you're just going to rinse it really well, then you're going to come back and flood rinse it one more time. If you want to use a soft bristle brush to kind of help break up the residue and remove that, then that would be a good idea. However, as mentioned before, when you are rinsing the residue, whether it be inside or outside, it is important not to over scrub it. The stain at this point can be scrubbed down fairly easily. Once it's been washed though and it has been allowed to dry, then the stain will lock in and you won't be able to scrub it down anymore. So if you have any particular dark areas that you do want to scrub down, now is the time to do it whenever you do the initial neutralizing and rinsing. Also bear in mind that the water with the residue will still have the capacity to stain and will still have the capacity to kill vegetation. So this mop water or this rinse water of residue, it can still stain. So be careful with it. Dispose of it accordingly. And if you're doing a driveway, instead of just rinsing it all the way down the drive and down the approach and down the street, try to rinse it sideways so that you're rinsing it to the side and off of the driveway into the grass or into the dirt. If you cannot keep it from running down the drive and going down the approach and down the street, that's where having a lot of water and a lot of flood rinsing will come in handy in having a brush. You rinse it on down, you keep the water moving. Once you get down to the approach, you just have that brush to lightly brush it. It'll brush on down. While you're neutralizing and rinsing it, this is the time to pay attention to what color it is and what it looks like. 
whenever it is saturated with water after you've rinsed it off, that's what it'll look like if you use a solvent-based sealer. Once it dries down to the point that it's damp, it's not saturated, it's not dry, but it's still damp. That's what it'll look like if you use a water-based sealer. And then of course when it dries completely, that's what it's going to look like if you don't seal it at all. It's cosmetic. It just makes it look better by sealing it. But sealing it is up to you. That's a determination you need to make. Yeah, it is cool. If you decide to use a vacuum to suck up the dry residue, make sure that the vacuum hose isn't dragging on your floor. The stain is in its infant state. Remember, a lot of things can scuff it. Vacuum hose, the wheels on your vacuum or mop bucket, they gotta move freely, not like a discount grocery shopping cart. Also, it's important to remember while neutralizing to watch how you use your feet. If your feet are pivoting, it can also scuff your floor. So it's probably not a good idea to do the Charleston at this point. One last point I would like to make is after you've neutralized it and rinsed it down, and really during the process, that's whenever you're going to notice if you have any blemishes or bad spots. If you had spots of pain or glue or anything like that, then that's where they're going to really stick out and you're going to tell that they didn't take the stain well. If you do have these spots of paint and glue in the areas where you patch and the stain didn't take well, not to worry. We'll discuss how to fix that in our patching and touch-up video. And that concludes neutralizing the stain section.